In this and the following videos we show you how we created the simulations and the animations for this scene. In this video we take a look at how we have simulated and animated the branches and the leaves of the trees. And in the next two videos we'll take a look at how to simulate the plants for the meadow and also how we've simulated the insects. In our 3D scene basically nothing was animated by hand except the 3D camera. How we have animated the camera we'll take a look in another video. Also the two persons we don't had to animate because here we used motion capture. That we'll show you also in another video. Yeah, to simulate and animate all the plants and trees in the scene was the biggest challenge for us. And by the way, this was also the main reason why we wanted to create this 3D scene. Because we wanted to test if we are able to realistic animate and simulate plants and trees in Blender. For that we did a lot of research and tested different methods. And we have found one method that works quite good, is easy to set up and also easy to adjust. If you are working with simulations you always should test the things in a small range or with very few objects. And if everything works right then you can apply it to your big scene. And then if the calculation takes some hours you are sure that everything works fine in the end. I open up the blend file with the tree we have created in one of the previous videos. And as you may remember the branches and the leaves we have created using a particle system. That means these three branches we have duplicated onto the tree using a hair particle system. And so we were able to create easily this tree top here. If we take a look at the particle system of the selected tree under rotation, initial orientation, we have enabled velocity hair. And this setting is important because we want to use the hair dynamics so that the branches will move in the wind. So, and if you click here inside the render panel on path, you can see all the hairs on the tree. Okay, for everything you want to adapt from the real world into your digital world, you certainly have to study it from the real world. Before I studied the real world, I thought if we are animating or simulating the trees, they have to bend extremely and all the leaves are blowing roughly in the wind. But if you take a look at these records here, you can see with normal wind speed, just the leaves and the tiny twigs are moving a bit but all the bigger branches and the trunk certainly does not really move. Yeah, and because of that we'll just animate and simulate the leaves and the smaller branches and twigs. For doing that I enable hair dynamics and all the settings I leave as they are for now. And if I play the animation you can see all the hairs are bending to the ground. When I later add all the branches will not be able to play back the simulation smoothly and because of that under emission I decrease the number to 5 so we can see the movement of the branches just on these 5 hairs. We can see the simulation smoothly and if it works for 5 hairs it will also work for more hairs. So we can increase the number after we've set up everything. So that the hairs are moving with the wind we add a turbulence force field, shift A, force fields, turbulence. Then I navigate to the physics settings and here we can adjust the strength of this force field. For now I set the strength value a little bit higher so that we can see the movement a little bit better. And if I now play back the animation you can see the hairs are moving roughly in the wind. But for my final scene I won't want to have such a strong movement. So I decrease the strength value to 5. I don't want that the hairs are bending so strong so I navigate back to the particle settings. And here under hair dynamics I set the stiffness to 2. Then you can see the hairs are more stiff. And also I set the damping to 2. That means we have some kind of air drag so the movement of the hairs are a little bit slower. 
Yeah, and that are basically all the settings we are doing for the hair dynamics. Now I go back to the render panel and here I enable the group. So we can see the branches on the tree instead of the hairs. And now we can see if I play back the animation, the movement of the hairs are assigned to the branches. Important to know in this case, the branches are not really bending. Basically, they just rotating up and down. If we take a closer look to the simulation while I play back the animation, you can see at the beginning, the branches are moving very strongly. And that's because the hairs are moving from the starting position to the position that is caused by the hair dynamics. That means in the beginning we always have a very strong movement and then in the end we just have the movement we actually want to have. To avoid this strong movement we are navigating to the cache panel in the particle settings. And here we set the starting frame to negative 100. That means the simulation starts before our actual animation is starting. That means the strong movement already happens in the negative frames and when our animation is starting at frame 1, we just have the slight movement of the branches. Now I set the number under emission back to 200, so we have 200 branches. And then under cache I click on bake. So the simulation will be cached and then we can play it more or less smoothly. Important to know if you have baked the hair dynamics, you can't move the tree because you can see the branches are staying where they are. So if you want to move the tree to the other position, you have to click here on free bake, move it to the other position and then bake it again. But we we'll don't have this problem because we group this tree later on and then link it into our final scene. And there we can move it around and still have this simulation on the tree. And then we are also able to duplicate the tree several times. But how this all works, we'll take a look in another video. Yeah, and if I play the animation, you can see the branches are moving. Just a reminder, now we need the slight movement of the twigs and the leaves. For that, I select one of the branches with the leaves. And at first I add a wave modifier. If I play back the animation, you can see we have this wave movement on the branch. The wave movement fits to the local axis of the object. And because of that, I rotate the branch in the X axis and then Ctrl A, apply the rotation. So the local axis has the same orientation like the global axis. And then you can see the local Z axis points upwards. And if I play back the animation, the wave moves along the branch. This movement is certainly way too strong and also we can see the root of this branch is moving strongly up and down and this is not useful. For that under object data I add a new vertex group and call it wave so we know that it belongs to the wave modifier. And then I switch to the weight paint mode then I hold down alt and with the left mouse button I drag a gradient from right to left. So the root of the branch has a dark blue color that means the wave modifier won't affect this area here. Then I navigate back to the wave modifier settings and here under vertex group I choose the wave vertex group. And now if I play back the animation you can see the tip of the branch is moving very strongly and the closer it gets to the root the less it is moving. But certainly that's still too strong, so I decrease the speed and the height to 0.03. And also I set the width to 1. The width value defines the distance between the different waves. And now you can see we have this slight movement. We will add a little bit more movement to the branch later, but first we want to add motion to the leaves. And for that I add the Displace modifier to the branch. Then under Texture I click on New and call this texture Displace Leaves. Then I click on the button on the right here to switch to the Texture settings. Under Type I choose Clouds. Then I increase the size and under Color I enable the ramp. And here I move the handles a little bit closer to the center. So we have a little bit more contrast between black and white. Then I switch back to the modifier settings and here I decrease the strength 
to 0.01. And so we just have a slight deformation of the leaves. But as you can see, nothing is moving here. And because of that, I add a empty object. This I call empty displays leaves. So we always know what this empty object is actually doing. Now I switch back to the modifier settings and here under texture coordinates I choose object. And then under object I choose the empty displays leaves object. And if I now move the empty object you can see the displays texture is moving and so also the deformation of the leaves is moving. And if we think back, in this case, this is really, really helpful that we have modeled all the different leaves of the plants with polygons and not just use a simple alpha texture. So the leaves have more geometry for deformation. So, but we have a small problem here. If I zoom in, you can see when I move the empty object, also the branch is deforming. But as you maybe remember, as we joined the leaves with the branch, we also had created a vertex group for the leaves only. And this vertex group I select under vertex group for the displace modifier. So here I choose leaves. And as you can see, when I move the empty object, just the leaves are deforming. Yeah, certainly we don't want to animate this empty object by hand all the time. And because of that, we'll use a modifier in the graph editor. And for that, I hover the mouse cursor over the 3D view. The empty object is selected, then I press I for inserting a keyframe. And then I click on location. So we have created a keyframe for the location. Then in the graph editor, I select one of the three channels. For example, the X location. And then in the properties menu, under modifier, I add the noise modifier. This modifier adds a random noise to our F curve here. And here in the modifier settings I increase the scale to 200 so the waves are bigger and the object is moving slower. And also I increase the strength to 10 so the object is moving with a bigger distance. So this modifier I copy clicking on this button here. And then I hold down shift, select both of the other channels and with the other button I paste this modifier also on the F curves of the other two channels. Now the noise on all the curves are exactly the same and because of that I change the face of two of the channels. And so you can see the curves are a little bit different. And now you can see the empty object is moving all the time randomly back and forth, up and down and so on. And you can see with the movement of the empty object, also the displaced texture is moving and so it seems that the leaves are moving with the wind. And if I increase the strength of the displaced modifier for example, you can see also the deformation for the leaves is stronger, so it seems that we have increased the wind speed. And also we can adjust the deformation if we adjust the displaced texture. If we, for example, add a little bit more black to the texture, you can see just a few leaves are moving. And the more white I add to the texture, the more leaves are moving. Okay, as you remember, we also added the wave modifier before. And the wave movement is always the same. And because of that, in the wave modifier settings under texture, I also add this displaced texture. And also under texture coordinates, I choose object. And for the object, I choose the empty displace leaves object. And now you can see according to the displace texture and the movement of the empty object, the wave modifier is moving. Yeah, and if I enable both modifiers and play back the animation, you can see we have a very nice movement of the branch and the leaves. Now I add the settings also to the other two branches. Important here is that we add the vertex group in weight paint mode. Then I select both branches without the modifiers and at last the branch with the modifier, holding shift so that all three branches are selected. And then I press Ctrl L and choose modifiers. And then the modifiers from the one branch were copied to the other two branches with all the settings. The deformation movement of all the three branches are very similar. And because of that, I change the offset value inside the wave modifier settings to different negative values. 
And so the wave movement starts a little bit different at all the different branches. And so the deformation also looks different. Also, I move the branches to different locations. Because the displaced texture depends on the position of the objects. That means if you have another location for the different objects, another part of the displaced texture is displayed on the objects. That means also the deformation of the displaced modifier is on different location a little bit different. Yeah, because of the fact that we have so many leaves, we can't play the simulation smoothly. And to see how exactly the movement of the leaves looks like, we now render an OpenGL render. Basically, we render the viewport view. And this certainly renders much, much faster as if we render a real rendering. For that, I choose a right camera perspective and then I adjust the render settings. The resolution I set to full HD. Also, we set up start and end frame. And then I navigate to output. For the file format, I choose AVJPEG, that's a video format. Then I choose the output folder. In this case, I just choose the desktop. And this I call Tree Ani Test. And then in the header of the 3D view, I click on this clapperboard. And then the viewport view will be rendered. So the first rendering here is the settings we have just set up. You can see the leaves and the branches are just moving very, very slightly. And then I've rendered this again with different settings. Here I increased the strength of the turbulence force field for the hair dynamics. And also I increased the strength for the wave and the displace modifier. Yeah, and basically with these settings you can control how strong the wind in your scene is blowing. 